are back. As uh, I'm sure everyone here knows, Ken Norton did something uh, that many poli uh, people believe could not happen. He broke, as you know, Muhammad Ali's jaw and silenced a gentleman for a while. Who a lot of people believe talks in his sleep. But in... <laughs> Did I say that? Yes, yes. Ah, little, little humor there. In uh, 31 fights, this gentleman has won 30 and 23 of these by knockouts. Would you welcome, please, Ken Norton. Ken. Good to meet you. Pleasure mine. Yeah. Pleasure mine. And by the way, we, I might explain why Ken is dressed like this, because uh, and when I'm Muhammad Ali comes, <laughs> you're forced to <laughs> later on. <laughs> Who on our staff forced you? I want to meet that person, whoever it is. Uh, we're going to have a, what they call a preliminary weigh-in a little bit later in the show, which we thought would be interesting uh, and is not the official weigh-in. Why, why do fighters, especially in the heavyweight division, get weighed in before the fight? Because there's really no limit, is there, as to what a fighter can weigh if he's a heavyweight? Uh, there's really no limit, but uh, it's it's a formality. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like my normal weight is about 225, 230. All right. And I train down to about 26 for each fight. In other words, you drop around 20, 25 pounds right. just, and that's by working out and. Uh... That's by running six, seven miles a day, working out in the gym, and <laughs> starving. <laughs> How long now before a fight you go into what you call serious training? I know you do a certain amount of road work generally Lots. and. Uh, normally, I train about four to five weeks, but for this one, I've trained eight. No. Yeah. Eight weeks for this one? Eight weeks. Any particular reason? Or you think it's going to be tougher? Because I'm fighting Muhammad, that's why. Don't because you're... <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what's your... How do you think it's going to come out Monday night? I'm gonna how do I think it's going to come out? I think it's going to be a very interesting fight with his dancing and my fighting. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I think that, uh, all in all, it's going to be a very good fight. And it's, uh -huh. I'm looking forward to go 12 rounds. It's scheduled for... For 12. for 12 rounds, right. Yeah, now last time you fought, of course, he, uh, at least they say he fought a good uh, major portion of that fight with a broken jaw. And yet you... Uh, he said uh, that. Yeah, that's what he said, right. right. Most of the fight. And a lot of people, a lot of the sports writers kind of got on you saying, look, you didn't even put the man away when you had him in that condition. Uh, Nobody else has put him away. Fraser hit punches a lot harder than I do, and uh, he dropped him once and it took him 15 rounds to get him down. And we only fought 12. Is that a good excuse? That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I, I'll try to go along with anything. I'd like to ask something. What his diet is? He said he diets. What do you eat in a day? What's it concentrated? Steaks? Well, normally I eat about three or four times a day when I'm not training. Uh, but when I'm training, I eat twice a day, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning and about 7.30 in the evening. And it's all high-protein foods, eggs, steaks, fish, nothing, nothing fattening. Ed no does pastry. the same thing. He uh, eats at 10 o'clock in the morning and finishes at 7 in the evening. <laughs> He's got it all wrong. You see, not twice. You do one continuous thing. Um, when, you, when you were a youngster, when did you start fighting as a... How long as a pro now? Uh, how long as a pro? I've been pro uh, possibly five years, which is not much. Yeah. And I was 20, almost 22 when I first started fighting in the Marine Corps, which is very late for anybody to start fighting. Most fighters, like Muhammad started when he was 12. Yeah, he was a... As, as a kid, he was fighting. He, he started at 12 or 13. I have a very good friend who started when he was 12 or 13. And I was an old man of 22 when I started, just about. As a kid, when you were a youngster, were you in fights, I mean? I had one fight when I was 17 and lasted for about two hours. We fought a while and we rested, fought a while and we rested. <laughs> and we ended up walking away and holding hands. You know, it, I, was in, uh, I was raised in a very small town. Where's home? Uh, Jacksonville, Illinois. Right. And um, there wasn't anybody to fight. <laughs> small town. <laughs> Never thought of that. You got to have somebody else to fight, don't you? Yeah. You mentioned now you, your, your age. You're 27 now? Uh, 29 now. Now, I have heard before, uh, at least boxing authorities say that a man's, as a, as a boxer, his physical peak should be around those years, 27 to 28, because you're, you're mature, that's your, your, your strongest year as far as agility and strength. Is, it, is that right, or is it younger, or is that about the age bracket? Uh, I've heard that to be true. I've been told this, but uh, I think it depends on how long you've been fighting, uh, how hard your fights have been, uh, and uh, all that combined. Mm -hmm. But with my starting at 22, and uh, I think my prime years would be around 30, 31, 32. I thought that was old for a fighter. Now, how it old is. is. How old it is uh, Ali? He's 31. None of but, that's not considered too old. It's not over the hill. Well, he's been it? fighting since he was 13. I've been fighting since I was 22. There's a difference. Are you saying think maybe he's a little over the hill? No, I didn't say that. You said that. that that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody said that. I, I was a, I said that. 31. But so uh, just the fact that he is 
has been a fighter longer, has taken more out of him? Would that be a fair? I would say that uh, it's, it's a very hard grind. You know, you just, uh, there's a lot of sacrificing and so forth, and one gets tired of the strenuous thing of training all the time. Is that the toughest thing, to stay at a condition uh, to get ready to go? Uh, it's tough to get there. Like, right. between fights, I tear myself down, you know, physically. Mm -hmm. By gaining weight, eating donuts, chasing women, whatever. And uh, I'm human. In which order? So, chasing women or...? A little, uh, switch off. You know. No, in other words, when you get into training, you stay away from women entirely. Uh, I, Serious training. I, I, can, can I say this nice? I've abstained for eight weeks. I've been up in the mountains for eight weeks with nobody but me, uh, myself, my trainer, my uh, three sparring partners, mm -hmm. and the cook. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who's, the, who's the cook? <laughs> No, now, they say in the ancient, in the ancient, I remember, in Roman history, they used to say that the warriors would not go out in a fight or they would abstain from, from sex, that's what we're talking about, because they thought it diminished the soldier's capacity for battle. And, uh, and they found that to be true as, as a fighter also? I, I, some some uh, trainers don't believe that, but mm -hmm. uh, I've been told that since I started. So it's, it's partly, it's partly uh, mental conditioning plus the fact that uh, I... I you know, I'm, I'm pre every day, my trainer, Eddie Futch, he mm -hmm. preaches it to me, don't do this, don't do that. And uh, I think if I went out and done something, that it uh, tears down my endurance. Right. So therefore, I just abstain. It's, it's a conditioned reflex. And that's the discipline, anyway, of getting right, ready for something true. like this. You have to sacrifice something. You never get something for nothing. Absolutely. And if, if the lady's going to be there beforehand, she'll be there when I get through. <laughs> I hope not always. <laughs> <laughs> well... That's a it's different, different. I'm, I'm not fighting, so well, it's I mean, a different. If she cares anything, she'll be there. Absolutely. Not, you know, You're absolutely right. The ratio in L.A. is what, 8 to 1? Hmm? The ratio in L.A. is 8 to 1. Something it? like that, yes. So there's no, no sweat. No problem. <laughs> okay, let me do a, a commercial here, and uh, we will meet you, as they say, your worthy opponent, uh, afterward, one of our sponsors. This weather's making me feel miserable. Yeah, try something cool. You forgot the ice. Oh, Mommy, want a pillow for your foot? Sure she does. Put it right here. Oh, thanks. This will make you feel cooler, Mommy. Can I rub some more on you? Sure, honey. Smooth on pure Johnson's baby oh. powder. And you'll feel a little cooler, a little drier, oh. and a lot more comfortable. Mommy, can I put some powder on your toe? Oh. We're in San Francisco to prove dogs who eat canned dog food will like Gainsburgers. He's kind of fussy. You'd think he'd been starving. What did he do just there? <laughs> Demolished it. <laughs> what does she normally eat? Canned dog food. What does this tell you? She's really going for it, isn't she? <laughs> she ate every bit of it. That's the reaction to Gainsburgers from most canned dog food users we spoke with. Gainsburgers, the canned dog food without the can. Muhammad Ali has been on this show, I suppose, six or seven times, and uh, he is usually introduced first, but we thought it was only fair to introduce Ken first tonight since you beat him the last time out. Fair enough? No argument. Okay, would you welcome Muhammad Ali? coming on your show in my robe. Yeah. 
We thought we would have, I don't know how many people have actually seen a weigh-in or why they have them. And, uh, yeah. Are you actually going to have a weigh-in? Well, yes, but you know the official way it is. How, how, what is it official? How long before the fight? I think a day before the fight. Yeah. Sunday, yeah. yeah. In other words, no matter what you weigh, you could, you, you could change before, uh, before the next day, right? I've been studying you seem UFOs. quite reserved tonight. What? I've been studying UFOs. Did you know there are UFOs out here flying around unidentified? <laughs> this would be the place for them, Southern California. <laughs> I'm serious. They sighted a bunch over Georgia. I've seen them at night. Uh, they have real photos of them, and the government and the people just completely seem like don't talk about it. But um, Mr. Harold Salkin of Washington, D.C., is the head of the National UFO Bureau. Right. He brought me moving films. I actually have moving pictures of little saucers of gray steel objects coming into pictures that people took, and I'm just surprised that don't nobody talk more about it. Something they can Another great insight into the fight game. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I read that. But did you read the thing last night on the, on the news? No. That some physicists said that what the people of Georgia might have seen were that there are, there are probably several thousand satellite objects no. Going around no, the United no, States, around the Earth, and sometimes they disintegrate and they come back into space. Not 50 feet over the highway. Well, it could. It's got to land somewhere. No. They call it swamp gas and something. They don't want... I don't know what it is, but I think I do. But uh, they actually, there are actual saucers and objects coming within our atmosphere and flying around, and people got pictures. Everybody sight the same thing in every city, the red and blue and green lights. But the people, the authorities completely brush it off as if to say we are mentally off, but I know it's right because I've been seeing them. Well, why don't they land then, Muhammad? I mean, if, now, if they're intelligent people, why wouldn't they land and step out and say, hi there, or Ding, whatever they say? You know, why wouldn't they make contact? Uh, they probably figure they can't get no sense out of the people here in this place. We've never talked about that on the show. I didn't know you really believed I in UFOs. I have photos. I have moving films. Yeah, but can't they can, you know, motion picture and this film. You're no smart trip. enough to know this that in still pictures they can, not these, they can phony these, those these up. Are, these are not phony. Ken, how do you feel about it? You believe they're flying saucers? I'm an innocent bystander. <laughs> but you've seen them. Yep. And the night, the one you can see on Tuesdays and Thursdays is like a big bright star if you go out. <laughs> Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's like a big, Are you sure you're up for this I'm, fight? I'm sure. If you're thinking about that, when your Monday night comes, he's going to knock your head no, off. No, I'm serious. You're going to say serious. it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> he's going to give you such a shot. No. No, it's not, it's not 10 o'clock. It's 4 and 5 in the morning. 4 and 5 in the morning. Oh. Seriously, it's like a big, bright star and you see it moving and it'll go up and disappear and get real small like a pinhead and then it'll come back and it'll shake and then it might move over here and it'll go over here. Seriously. I'm serious. I'm not... Well, I know you're serious in your belief. I, I, I don't have to believe in it myself. This is anybody who's got eyes is belief. Well, you, you can see a lot of things, but that doesn't always make them well, so, objects so, from other so planets. That. What about the fight? Well, yeah, what about the fight? Monday night, right? Well, we just come in for the weekend, I saw. Well, I read about it in the paper today. You had, you had I some more. I wasn't told that we had to sit out here and talk. <laughs> you tricked me. You're pulling a Howard Cosell on me. That's not true, and you know it. But I read in the paper yesterday, you already were in the papers yelling and screaming about your accommodations when you showed up. Oh, you didn't yes. like the hotel room. You didn't, you didn't said you didn't have any place to train. All I'm of, sure all of these Ken things. will bear witness the last five or six days of a fight is like a countdown in a rocket ship, like when the man is saying, you know, five, four, three, two. If anything happens, they stop the whole operation. All these people in Houston, millions of dollars and billions of dollars at stake, big rocket ship, everybody on the post looking at lights and buttons. If one little thing go wrong, they stop it. And I got everything taped down now for 15 long weeks. I'm down to about 207 pounds. Last time was 225. Yeah. I've did everything perfect for 15 weeks, chopped down 185 oak trees, been running up mountains, eating raw meat. I'm ready. And here I get to the hotel, and we stand at the Marriott Hotel. It wasn't their fault, the new Marriott. And I was in there to give my, get free rooms for this. I knew I'm at the new Marriott Hotel. <laughs> you already got a free saucer. Yeah. <laughs> I got a free what? Free flying saucer. Oh, I know. Oh, 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 little humor there. <laughs> 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 we 
we come all the way, we come all the way here, and I get to the Marriott, and that's their fault for some Don Frazier, some boxing promoter here, and they put me in a ballroom with chandeliers and carpet and drapes, and they say, here's where you train, and some of the baddies putting up a little amateur ring, and I'm ready to train, I'm ready to go. So we start to get on my bus, go back to Deer Lake, Pennsylvania, to my training camp where we have log cabins, we have wood, and, and we have rocks and coal, and everything is rugged, and mountains and trees, and fresh water, and well water, and fresh air, and I come here to the hotel and all this plushness, it just don't fit. What did you expect at the Marriott? Well, I didn't know I was going to get the Marriott. Log cabins and mountains? Are you taking this fight seriously this time? Mm -hmm. You really are? Because you said yourself the last time you didn't train and you didn't take I it seriously. I trained, I didn't train. But you didn't like train I seriously. Should. I didn't eat like I should. And Ken saw me around the hotel every day entertaining the fans. In the gym, he would train. I was joking and telling jokes and laughing with everybody. And I went to myself in the public to train at least once in my life. I hate training. Oh, no. I hate the idea of the hustle and bustle and training camps. I've always avoided it. I've never really trained for a fight. This time, I've actually had to train because it's do or die. Yeah. Ken's a good fighter. To break my jaw, you have to be good on any condition. And he's, I have to be ready. Right. So for once in my life, I'm going to say I've trained for at least one fight, like Rocky Marsana did and Jack Johnson and Gene Tooney and yeah. Joe Lewis. They really trained. Now, Ken says this is going to go 12 rounds. What do you think? It might. We can't tell. Are you not going to make any more predictions like you well, used to? No, I'm not predicting because it puts me on too much of a spot. And even if I win the fight and miss the round, I predicted. Many people consider that a loss because I'm so accurate. <laughs> I, fought, I fought this fellow, Joe Bogner of England. I predicted right. round seven. Beat him good for 12. Many of them went out, oh, he missed a round. Yeah. Well, we better do the preliminary way. And you want to wake Ken, and uh, we'll go on over here. <laughs> hmm? Both, both together? Okay. Shall we have a preliminary way in and see? Usually, how we... we have somebody to wheel. So well, we'll, 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 I'll be Carson wheels. I'll right, weigh in. We're we'll, all we'll, we'll, are we all? Of yes, we'll make it official. Well, here we are at the weigh-in. <laughs> so I've got to set this. Put that at two hundred. What? Two hundred. All right. Here we are. Is there any protocol of who's to who weighs well, weight first? Could you check this first and make sure the scale is accurate? Scale is accurate. We have checked. Yeah. Let's make sure it's accurate. Hold it's, it, wait. Yeah. Hold it. No, wait, wait, wait. It's a whole oh, it's a little off. How's that? Well, let's wait and see. You're agitating enough. You oh, got us you're agitating. Want <laughs> Always been just like white folks. Like to get two color folks fighting. That's Imagine. right. Been doing this for 400 years, getting no, those fights. No, I'm going to put this up to 200. You want to take your who, who's first? Want to go first? Uh, yeah, I'll go I'll, first all right. since I got whooped the first time. Uh, all right. <laughs> Sandals off. Got to set it. What do you mean? You don't get to do this yourself, do you? I usually do. Oh. You can find the man. Yeah, you can, you can move it on over easy. Be real easy. Okay, come on. 270. Oh, right here, 216 is usually my fight weight. When well, I'm 216, I'm bad, I'm fast. Me. <laughs> How much farther we can go? Go ahead. Yeah. 250. Hold it. Didn't move. Two, that's hold 214. 14. Hold it. Wait. wait. 213. 213. Ain't move yet. 212. Hold it. Now, this is the weight I fall signing. Listen the first time. <laughs> Ooh. 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 212. Hold it, man. All right. I'm serious. All of you who know That's what make him so mean. They said I was fat. They said I was fat and I was all washed up no. and I can't do it no more. Going down to 211. 211. Uh oh. You, I know we're going to move. It's starting to move. It's so starting to move. Oh, wait, wait. Try 210. Easy. It's, easy. I got 210 and a half wait, on here right now. now. Wait, wait now. We, we got a little more. 210 two ten and a half. half and, mm. That's what you weigh yeah. right now. 210 and a half. Three more days to four more days to work. Right. 210 and a half. 210 and a half. You want to get, you want to come in? I'll tell you what to do. Let's don't touch it. Let's leave it here and let Norton stand on and see what happens. All right. Okay. <laughs> see if he's <laughs> <laughs> he might be heavy or light. Ain't you got no them chains on. No you way. got too much weight Ain't on. No way, you got all those weight on. Forget it. You got too Jeez. much weight on.
No, 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 no. He wasn't right there. Okay. No, I think we had to move it down anyway. Okay. Yeah. Now we got to go this way. <laughs> Try by two seven. Two seven. Try two six. Two six. Don't get nosy, but it's still going. No. <laughs> two five. You in trouble? No, he's too. <laughs> Two, four... Two skinny. Two, four and a half. Two skinny. So we all know this is a preliminary way, and the actual way in will take place on Monday, the day of the fight. I'm going to go for about three more pounds. You're about another three pounds lighter, so you'll be down around 207. About 207. Something like that, and Ken's going to come in at about... To need five. a little gas yeah. to burn. I can't be too yeah. much light on that because it's a hard 12 rounds and following me, you're going to yeah. need a lot of weight. Well, look, gentlemen, I thank you for being here tonight. I admire both of you, as you know. Best luck, and may, as they say, By the way, I'm a better man on I have a boxing friend in prison out there somewhere in New Jersey. I forgot the exact prison. Just want to wish him luck in his appeal. They got him for manslaughter. I don't know the case, but many people say no. that he's innocent. Many of the detectives say he's innocent. And they railroaded yeah. him. And his name is Reuben Hurricane Carter. So I want to well, make that I, I don't know the case, but uh, let's make up their mind. Thank you, Ali. Thank you. Thank you. I to tell you, when you talk about physical conditioning, both of those gentlemen absolutely look superb, don't they? Because mm. Ali is, is slimmed out. If he was 225 the last fight, that's a lot of weight to lose. How much money would it take for you to face one of them in the ring? There is not enough money, money in, in the, the East. world. <laughs> we will return. Are we going to do the big sketch to this? What? Mighty Carson, All right. After this word, we will be back. Here's a pause for one of our friends. And then we'll be back.